May 28, 2014, um, an inmate that I had known for a long time showed up at my office door. He walked in my office, he just tried to jam the lock, and he said, I'm sorry, but I'm here to kill you today. He strangled me, he um, beat me unmercifully with a stapler over my head, um, punched me continuously. And at this point, I had made peace with death. I had already knew I was gonna die. And I just stared at my, the pictures of my two kids and my ring. Be advised, suspect is armed and considered extremely dangerous. And uh, continue on to the prison. And then uh, what advice, if we're, just keep coming here, what advice uh, as you get closer, if you're still needed. Okay, quick, thanks. If you're going to hold down the seat, I'm with 125, we're the active your back. I felt front position. So, you know, we're starting to recognize more and more in the military the impact of uh, post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. But in this environment, is it safe to assume it's much more of a cumulative thing? It's the things that you see over weeks and months and years? Yes. So, I mean, I, I'm in the military as well. I've served uh, nine years in the National Guard now. About six of that have been on active duty with the Guard. And I certainly have seen the effects of PTSD once my service members there. Uh, I've seen it amongst officers here as well because there are those, it, it, like I said, a lot of monotony, a lot of everything, nothing, everything's going like it should right now, the normal day, and then it kicks off in a second and you have to run to some place and deal with somebody that's getting in a really bad fight or a stabbing or just blood everywhere because of what happened. On any given day, you don't know what you're going to walk into and hopefully when you get out of there that you can just put that aside and go about your normal routine. But you just, you don't know what to expect until you get in there. And it does depend on the facility you work at. We're at the Supermax prison. I work at a medium. It's different structure, different environment. Um, the inmates are all kind of the same. The population's changing. There used to be, like, the older inmates there were, that were running it, and the place was very calm. However, with classification and the way that they're moved around through the facilities, it's changed a lot. So on any given day, something can jump off, and you've got to deal with that situation at that time. You're kind of just accustomed. You come in here. The radio transmission, when it goes off, you see everybody, they kind of listen. It's kind of like, you know, do it, it's involuntary, you just do it. You're wondering, hear what's going on, so um, you never know what's going to be on the other end of, other end of that radio, what, what's going on. So I think you're always kind of prepared for it, but you never really fully know what you're in for. And you rely a lot on your fellow officers and staff to know what they're doing and be there for you. PTSD. Uh, you know, it's, it's a struggle that a lot of COs um, deal with here. After that incident, there were so many correction officers that would see me that had responded to that um, that would burst into tears. It was, um, it was very sad to see. Um, when I came back to work, people would come up to my office and say, you know, it was 1 o'clock in the afternoon and tell me exactly what they were doing and what they saw. The PTSD affects law enforcement for a multitude of reasons, and, and it needs to be taken seriously. But you can move forward from it. It's not a death sentence. I can compartmentalize be, from being in the military. I don't take it home. When I leave that parking lot, I don't even remember what, what goes on there. I don't talk to friends about my job. When I leave the parking lot, it's in my rearview mirror. Until when, when I'm returning, I say, oh, okay, I got to go into work today. Mm -hmm. Don't, I have too many, too many things on the outside. Sure. I'm, I'm right now, I'm, you know, I'm doing my dissertation for my PhD. So I have a lot of stuff that I'm... You just keep it separate? I just keep it separate. Nice. Just keep, and, I, and, I've been doing, and I've been doing it for 20 years. I always believe that you have to have something other than this job because it will affect you. You start to become numb to a lot of stuff, stuff that would bother a normal person, a civilian, <clears throat> doesn't seem to bother correctional officers. We can't let it bother us. You know, we have to be able to make a decision and act on it in, a, you know, in that blink of an eye and be able to just not panic or, you know, um, back down from a situation. You kind of get used to it somehow. I can personally say I have always been pretty good at keeping myself out of the prison after I joined the agency. I want to say probably three or four years after I did that. I remember um, sometimes it, it's, it's difficult. It, it takes some time for you to realize that this is the job you do. This is not who you are. So at the end of the day, some people have an issue leaving their 
issues outside and bring them in. And no one understands that all these little things impact your life. They impact your life personally, emotionally. That's why there's a lot of alcoholism, drugs, you know, among the staff. Um, and th the other thing that's not understood is that when you walk into this facility, you walk in willingly, and it isn't just the correction officers, it isn't just the CPOs, it's the maintenance workers, it's the clerical people, it's the medical staff, it's the middle word team. And everything that happens here impacts all of them. You do bring it home, unfortunately. Um, I use, you know, family, friends, the gym, try to, you know, do different things outside of here and to not think about that. But do you try to vent about it? Yeah. Do they understand it? No. So you try to keep your friends um, that you work with, your co-workers, acquaintances, to maybe talk about it and work it out that way. So if you have a good family life, good hobbies, you can make friends in, you know, amongst your officers at the job, then you'll do fine at it. But if you have good things on the outside that can keep you happy, your job's great. I look at my kids and I'm happy to have them every day. I look at my husband and I'm happy to have him every day. I am happy to have my job. I'm happy to just be here. I'm, I'm not, um, I, I found forgiveness for the inmate that did this to me. Um, because you have to. You, you have to move forward and, and be the happiest person that you can be. We might look different when it comes to the uniform and stuff like that. Our unions are different too, but we are definitely a big family. The best part of, out of all this is that you get to work with real good people. We all have each other's back. We know it doesn't matter the color of the uniform. We should be working as a team, and we do. You have to understand this is a very, very difficult job, but it's also a very rewarding job. That We feel good when we're out in the community, and we see the individual, and the individual says, meet my family, I have a job, I'm succeeding in life. And there are some that do that.